The thing about improving as a player, or any fighting game in general, this is just like a general topic. To improve at a skill, whether it's commentary or playing fighting games or learning how to play piano or learning how to beatbox or learning how to cook, is that you have to realize a couple of important things when you want to improve. One, you have to realize first and foremost that you suck. Everybody sucks at whatever skill they're trying to learn. There is always room to improve. And if you ever forget that, or if you ever stop thinking that you have places to go up, you won't improve, right? The minute you think you're the best you'll ever be is when you cap out and there's no room to realize that you have the ability to improve, right? There's always more that you could learn or improve or get better at, you know what I mean? So realizing first that you suck, not just you, everybody sucks. Super strong players. You'll turn into a, a, a stream. This guy will be Grandmaster Ultra 420 Blaze at rank, and he'll be like, man, I missed that anti-air there. I didn't get the meaty timing right. I missed my combo. I suck. Man, I fucking suck. And it's like, this dude is like fucking fourth ranked on the leaderboards. He beats all these good players. He places in CBT events, and he's like, I suck, right? There's always room to improve, right? The second thing is you have to remember that when you're learning any skill, it's not about immediate results, and it's not about winning or losing. It's not about you know, how you're doing on that day. It's about uh, building skills. So when you're, let's say you're a fighting game player and this is what you have as a player, right? These are your skills. What you need to do every day is when you're playing, don't play to win, right? Don't play around at all. Instead, play over on and thank Rayu. Rayu? Rayu? For the Twitch Prime, thanks very much. So you have this set of skills and you're playing, right? While you're playing, all you're looking to do is improve, right? Don't play to win. Don't play to beat your friends or whatever, right? You're looking to improve. And improving will make you win more, right? So in general, you shouldn't play to win. You have this bundle of skills, right? And let's say you're playing and you, what you realize is, you know what I'm really bad at? I'm really bad at anti-airing. So you're trying to build your skills by like, all right, now I'm gonna practice anti-airing. So I'm gonna bring that into my thing. You know what I realize? As a habit, I have a really nasty habit of always teching on defense. So I need to remove that from my bundle of skills, right? And it's always improving, 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 right? So grinding and trying to fix the issues you have and playing to improve instead of playing to win. Because if you play a match, right, and you're like, I never anti-air. My anti-airs suck. And you play against the guy and you're like, no matter what happens in this match, I'm going to anti-air. And he jumps at you and you miss your anti-air. But then you mash jab and you get a hit and you kill him anyway and you win the, the match, right? You won the game, but you didn't improve. You know what I mean? So that's why focusing on improvement is more important than focusing on winning because winning isn't a sign of improving. Everybody can win, you know, matches here and there. But if you want to consistently win, if you want to consistently become a better player, you need to focus on improving instead of focusing on playing. And it's like that for any skill, right? It's like that, like, and there are going to come times where you struggle to learn something, but learning how to do that is more important than just giving up and like trying to skirt around it by using your other skill sets. Like maybe you want to learn how to play piano. When you first start, you're not going to be able to get your hands to work at the same time. You're barely going to be able to play chords. You're barely going to, you can't remember where the notes are on the, where the hell is middle C? Is it this C or is it that C? Is that a C or is that a G? I don't know. There's going to be stuff like that when you're learning. You won't know how to sight read. Uh, you'll be like memorizing songs and trying to play them back. You're going to struggle, right? But then you'll learn how to use both hands. You'll learn how to sight read. You'll learn where all the keys are on the keyboard. You'll learn how to use the sharps and the flats and you'll learn all these other things. It's the same thing about like learning how to beatbox. Maybe there's noises you feel super comfortable with, but you can't do a certain snare. You can't contort your mouth in a way to play this, make this certain snare noise, right? That's when like stuff like this where you have to sit down, you have to study, you have to figure out what you have to do. And sometimes you need to take breaks. It's not even like sit down and like think about it and be like, man, I need to just keep trying this over and over. Sometimes you need to step back. You need to like go on YouTube and look up different techniques. You need to sit down and think about what you're good at, what you're bad at. Take notes on stuff, right? Having a notepad open when you play games is excellent. Just have a notepad open, write down things that you remember from the match. Like, oh man, you know what I really sucked at? I blocked this move and I didn't know what it was. I need to go check that after training mode. Write that down, right? How do you get better at making decisions? You gotta keep playing so that you can build muscle memory and you have to have moments over and over and over. When you block the move 100 times, you know how to punish it, right? When you block the move 10 times, you're like, ah, is it minus this? Is it, what is it? I, need it? I don't have the muscle memory drilled into my hands. It's the same thing with drilling combos in training mode. It's the same thing with practicing playing the same chords over and over and over. It's the same thing with singing, doing vocal exercises to warm yourself up. Any of these things are like 
skill building exercises that you have to do. It's the same thing with commentary. It's the same thing with learning how to cook or riding a bike or any kind of skill that takes work. You're going to have to sit down and think about it and uh, work on improving it, right? Like we're talking on camera. I was not good at talking on camera at first. I actually was very good at speaking into a microphone, but not used to talking on camera. And I had to practice talking on camera over and over and over until I became comfortable with it, like public speaking, right? Any te techniques to expand your mental bandwidth? That's a tough one. Probably just takes trial and error. And yeah, that's one of those things you'd have to, you'd have to probably sit down and focus on. That's just another skill to build. That's just another thing that you'd have to look up and see what kind of techniques people have, right? And see like what their thought processes are. Try different things out, right? That's one thing that you have to remember is that a lot of trial and error goes into self-improvement. And once you know the process about starting with nothing, building a set of skills, adding things in, removing bad habits or removing nasty things that you do, constantly building skills until you have something more than what you started with, until you feel comfortable with where you are, is the same process you do for everything. The same process to, for learning will never change, right? It will never change when, no matter what the skill is, you'll find different hardships and you'll have different starting levels about where you are, but you'll always be like that. You know what I mean? It'll always be like that, no matter what you wanna learn, no matter what you're interested in learning, no matter what skill it is, whether it's in a video game or in real life, it's always like that, right? My future career will be self-improvement. Hell no. I do like teaching, though. I've done a lot of coaching and teaching before. So I find self-improvement is, is obviously an important part about that. Do I rewatch my commentary? All the time. There are words and sayings and phrases that you cycle through as a commentator that sometimes you do it too much, so you change to something else. But everybody has vocal habits that are hard to kick. And it just takes practice and repetition and planning to get rid of it. So, you know, it's just like that, sort of as a person. And everybody has default phrases that they go to when they don't know what to say. Your brain has to fill space. No matter how experienced you are with public speaking, your brain needs to fill space. Right? You know? You, those are like the phrases that I use often. Your brain has to comprehend what you're saying and come up with what you're gonna say next. So even if you're an excellent public speaker, there will be moments where you're like, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna say next, so let me make sure that I cover some time and then I'll get there. Yeah, learning how to curse, or learning how to not to curse. That's like a switch. In my mind, I have a switch. You notice on my stream, I curse all the time. All the time. Except for when I started doing this part portion where I realized this would probably go up on YouTube. Then I turned it off. But, in general, I have an on and off switch for cursing, right? When you're speaking to a, you know, somebody that you need to impress, you should probably not do as much cursing. Or if you're gonna be on stream, you should probably not curse as much. But, or around children. I curse a lot around children. I don't know why, but kids don't count to me for my switch. It's just something that you kind of have to deal with when you're on commentary. Because, you know, at Wednesday Night Fights, I curse. But on CPT, I don't curse. But anyway, self-improvement takes a lot of work. And learning a skill takes a lot of trial and error. But you can't be mad at yourself when you lose. And you can't be mad at yourself when you fail. It's more important that you recognize mistakes and work to improve them than not have any mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm probably going to rewatch that. Me talking about improvement, I'll probably rewatch this and be like, you know what? Here's how I should have phrased this instead, or here's the example I should have used off the cuff instead. And I will probably be like, I fucked that all up. <laughs> but it happens, right? Like, you know, we're human beings. You can always be better at this. It's why I often tell stories and stuff on my stream and practice public speaking on here. It's the reason my stream is used for commentary. If you think about every other commentator uh, that does commentary for fighting games, right? There is no way they have more practice than I do because I stream three or four days a week. And when I'm not streaming, I'm at events commentating live. So it's impossible for them to have more practice time for me. And because I have more practice time, it'll be easier for me to say what I want to say and be prepared of when I want to like say whatever it is, right? I'll have more experience. I'll have more practice. It's just like, you know, it's a natural thing. Jeremy does stream a lot. That's true. I, that self-improvement topic is interesting to me because there's a lot of... No, I didn't say be better or worse. I just said have more practice. More practice just means I have more chances to make mistakes on uh, this stream here than somebody who doesn't stream, right? That's all there is to it. Practice doesn't make you better than anybody else. I've, I've had a lot of people that I've met in my life who are extremely naturally talented and... <laughs> 
I've practiced a lot and still not been better than them. But I can improve and try to catch up, you know? That's just something that, that's just how life goes. You guys, everybody knows a friend like that, right? Who's ridiculously good at something that they barely care about or they barely practice at. Practice doesn't make you better. It does make you better. It doesn't make you the best necessarily, though. That's why I do commentary on here, right? That's why I use my stream as practice. You get better at anything if you practice it enough. Can you help Steve find a few alternate ways to say make some noise? No. In fact, Steve is world class. He's a good example of someone who doesn't need to do a lot of practice and he's very, very, very good. He has had a lot of practice because he's done so many events. Think about Tasty Steve. He doesn't stream, but he literally is at a tournament every single weekend. Always on the mic, right? We have had so much practice. There is nobody, I firmly believe there is nobody better at working a crowd that I've ever met than Tasty Steve. Tasty Steve could be anywhere in the world and just get on the mic and be like, all right, I want y'all to make some noise and everybody would scream. I don't know why. If I got on the mic and do that, nobody would yell. Nobody would yell. If I was like, all right, guys, make some noise, we get like 75% of the people to yell. But Tasty Steve doing it, he has that natural charisma and enthusiasm that makes you want to be excited with him. And that's not something that I have that he has, right? It's like we're just different people in that way, and that's okay, right? It's something you can work on, but he is just too good. How do I feel about making random noises during combos? You have to be good at it or it's going to suck. And I think it's a, it can be a crutch for people who aren't already those people. Like Yipes and Steve when they make noises, fantastic. Like Rip has good noises too, but some people, they don't know what to say, so they just make noises. People get upset when younger players are successful because, you know, they're too used to the old guard doing well and stuff, right? I don't think a lot of people are like that. The thing about, it's hard these days. Because of there's so many players, it's very hard to keep track of who does what. The good example is El Chocolate over at SCR beating Tokido. A lot of people were like, who's this random Mika player who, like, beat Tokido? And it's like, a this is not a random dude, right? It's just not a random guy subscribing to your Twitch channel like, what is your name? Dangoro Goron. <laughs> Thanks very much for the Twitch Prime. Reading it on there was like, it looked like a minefield. I had to read it on the Twitch thing. Thanks very much, homie. Uh, the thing about him is that he streams like all the time on Twitch. And he's very high ranked. And if you type his name into YouTube, you can find tons of matches of him playing. So, you know, just because he's not popular in the eyes of the everyday man doesn't mean that like it's not a player who's very very strong and works all the time yeah he's not a secret he streams on twitch all the he's probably streaming right now i bet you he is if i go and click on street fighter oh maybe he's at a tournament this weekend or something yeah most people don't know who he is and you know people will just spread that because tokido losing to a random player is interesting and it's cool you know they just say it or whatever even if it's not true remember when tokido lost to powell at uh Evo Japan, everybody's like, he lost to this random Japanese Kami player who's a god. But then when he loses to like a US Mika player, it's like, that guy's whack. <laughs> it's just not, he's not even Japanese. That's what Brian F would say. This guy can't be good. He's not even Japanese. This guy's from Asia. He's a monster. He's from NA. Lucker dog. That's what they say.